right. Well, welcome everyone. Thanks so much for being here this morning. Um, uh, I am Ashley Eggy with the Community Foundation of the New River Valley, and today we have um, some exciting guests with us um, from Atlantic Union and from First, Nash, uh, First Bank and Trust, who are going to be sharing some information on investing with us. Um, I am in the office today with Scott Arnett, who's kind of in the corner over here, Scott Wave, and Mike is um, on camera with us as well. And so Mike's going to kick us off this morning, and he's going to talk a little bit about the commercial side of investing. And then we're going to kick it over to Scott, who's going to talk about the personal side of investing. And then we're going to give you all the opportunity to ask questions to either of them. Um, if you have questions during the meantime, you can put those questions in the chat um, while they're speaking and um, hopefully they can get to those after they're done or if it's convenient while they're speaking as well. Um, as always, um, if you're not speaking, if you could please mute your mic and once again, if you could use the chat feature um, if you do have a question. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and Mike, I will allow you to share yours. Okay, great. Thank you, Ashley, and uh, I mean, thanks for the, yeah, inviting me on to speak. Um, you yeah, know, it's, it's always good to see faces. Now, naturally, you know, I hope you know some of these uh, events will start being more in person as we progress and, and move through this whole cycle uh, that we've been in. But, uh, but again, in the meantime, this is a great way to open communications, share information, and um, uh, you know, just keep things plugging along. And um, I'm happy to do this on behalf of the foundations. So I'll do a share screen here in just a second. But when Ashley asked me to speak, you know, I, I kind of thought, well, okay, what, what would be kind of the right format? And with it being, you know, a uh, community foundation on a lot of nonprofit engagements, um, yeah, I thought, well, I would share a snippet of a, a presentation that we do um, and have done in the past. Um, and part of this, it, it looks at, um, the importance of a, a particular document, an investment policy statement, and how that pertains to any type of uh, institution, nonprofit, et cetera. So I'm going to start doing a screen share here in a second. Um, this is, uh, I can find the button. Let's see. Okay. Everybody kind of see this now? Good, good visibility. Okay. So, you know, my name, myself, I'm Mike Snow. I'm part of the Institutional Advisory Group for Atlantic Union Bank. And, you know, we work with a lot of institutional nonprofits, uh, organizations uh, out there as it serves investments. Uh, but in addition to that, you know, myself and a lot of my colleagues, we also serve on boards, investment committees, and, and whatnot. So, it's, it's nice because you're able to bring the perspective from both sides of the table, you know, both from, from being an investment manager and, and a fiduciary representative, but also to, to uh, uh, realize and understand the importance of merits of what missions and objectives are for any kind of a nonprofit. So, um, as I mentioned, this is kind of a smaller part of a presentation. I'm going to flip over. It's going to be a lot of a lot of a lot of things, but I'll just kind of focus down focus down bullet by bullet, and I'm going to share this document with Ashley uh, after the call, so uh, it'll be there you know, for future reference. But in kind of looking at, at at a general flow of how an investment policy, you know, what how important that is to a community, uh, an organization. I thought I would share some of the, the fine points of what we've seen in looking at those over time. A lot of times, you know, I mean, an organization may not have an investment policy statement. Yeah, you know, they, they may just kind of be operating, getting funds in, and, and it's mixed between operational and personal, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, long-term or perpetual type needs, but, but there's no delineation. So, uh, you know, that kind of proves the point. Um, another factor of what we saw in one, ones that do exist is, you know, just they're very complex, you know, they're, they're very wordy, they're very uh, overly specific in areas that they need not be. Um, so, you know, those, those can be intimidating for a board member, et cetera, you know, as, as you kind of look at that. Um, 
and you know, with this being one of the most important governance do documents for an organization, um, because it's going to be speaking to how they invest those funds and what they do with those, and and how those can can better you know uh, uh, portray the mission. So, in in looking at um, kind of the mission first, you know, what do we mean by that? Well, I mean essentially what it says: define, defining the purpose of the funds. You know, it's a high level detail of how the organization may operate. You know, what uh, kind of vision, what do they, where they hold themselves on, on the current status, but also in a forward looking. And, you know, how does that path come into play? Um, so, that, yeah, that really fits into the strategic planning the other board or committee may be doing. Um, roles and responsibilities. This is kind of another, you know, to um, highlight, I would say, of a very focal in the foundational structure of, it, of the document. It's looking at, um, so as a committee member, uh, it may be as an investment committee that's a subset of a board uh, uh, or a group there. What are the roles and responsibilities within that governing document? Um, you have to look at some of the uh, fiduciary responsibilities. You know, there's there's a, a term out there, a jargon that's uh, utilized uh, of MIFA, and that really categorizes on um, you, what your high level fiduciary roles are when you're dealing with those types of, of funds. Um, so, and, and, you know, essentially as that board or committee member, you know, your ultimate goal is being responsible for making sure the organization is gonna have the best uh, uh, chances at uh, meeting the, uh, reaching its mission and objections and, 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 and essentially that's overseeing all things said, and in particular, any endowment that may be in play. Um, you know, there's there's other areas that kind of pop up into that is, you know, are, are we more discretionary, non-discretionary? You know, does, does the investment manager have full uh, opportunity to invest the funds based on a, a, a governing document that we've agreed upon? Um, or do, you know, we have some, you know, bit of offset or, or does, does it seek to make recommendations more of, uh, uh, you know, an advisory type role versus a uh, fiduciary manager. So another key component is, you know, discovering uh, and considering what in objectives, you know, spending time horizon, how those all fit into the, the, the mix. You know, you have to develop and, and, and communicate what are the periodic or annual spins uh, that may be out there? You know, how, how do we preserve purchasing power for the assets? You know, not just growing the assets enough to cover our, our bills and our spend, but what do we do to ensure that we're growing at a, a, a pace that's going to actually see net growth of all that expenditure um, to build on the future and to provide that, you know, those streams uh, down the line. Um, and then, you know, that kind of fits in. You, you also have to consider the cost of the investments, the investments being used, you because know, typically a, an organization, say they may have a, you know, 4% spend, um, you add on a, a, an average inflation, it's run a little heated, you know, beyond that now, but of well, historic 2% of a target, you know, so you're at 6% there, and then whatever cost of the management, that kind of tells you a hurdle. So how do my funds need to be allocated to, to ensure that I'm not taking any more risks than I need to necessarily be, but I'm gonna be able to hit those bogeys or those spend patterns and those expenses as, as you progress. Um, so that, that kind of covers, you know, uh, in, in broader context, you know, we, we, I can get into the weeds on any of these topics, uh, but, but I'm just gonna try to keep it on a high level, you know, just for time, time sake. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, the spending target and, 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 and how do you construct that portfolio? What is the right asset allocation? So that those are other important factors that investment policy statements might have in there in order to clearly communicate. Again, it's we're, we're under accept, acceptable level of risk, but we're positioned to where we're going to meet our goals. Um, and, you know, with that, I mean, that even comes down into looking at the types of allowable assets, uh, you know, so that's something as a, a board or committee that they're going to have input into, you know, are we using stocks, bonds, ETFs, mutual funds, um, 
you know, uh, passive managers, active managers, uh, you know, real estate, commodities. I mean, you go down the line. Um, those are where, you know, you're, you're providing structure and, and, and guidance per se for the investment manager. And as you kind of look at that, you know, in connection, um, you know, how are you measuring the success of the overall? I mean, uh, you know, you, you look at, you know, per se on an investment manager, you want to be looking at saying, okay, well, from a, um, as I mentioned that spin, so from a spin rate and expense, that could be one benchmark in particular that you're looking at for. Is it hitting and checking the marks and, and, and passing those, those uh, uh, with success? But in particular, how the managers invest it, you know, the types of funds, et cetera, they may be utilizing, are we measuring them up uh, you know, in an appropriate manner? Um, and then you know, that closely fits into reporting, communication standards, yeah, you know, there has to be that active, ongoing uh, communication flow between any board committee and, and the fiduciary outlays. You know, who are they maybe using to manage those funds? So, um, yeah, that's something that that should be very customized. You know, the committee or board ought to have good word into that and set appropriate timeline or task as far as how often they meet with the manager. Uh, you know, what they may be be expecting to see during those meetings, et cetera. So. Um, and then finally, you know, this, this is with any financial plan, et cetera, you know, from a personal level or, or from a, a corporate or an institutional level, you have to be, this can't be a passive document, something you create and just kind of shove on the shelf and it ought to be revisited. Um, you know, times changed. If we look at just what's occurred, you know, since uh, the end of 19, 2019, where we're running in a long market cycle and wondering how that was going to come about an end. Um, and then, you know, just to let loose of what that's, this global, uh, the pandemic set for. Um, really imperative time to look at it, not to just overly critique or, or make radical you know, changes, but is it still speaking and is it still in a format to where it's structured for us for best success down the road? Um, you know, that's, that's one of the important things that uh, needs to occur is have that active communication flow, you know, as it pertains to uh, an institution, nonprofit, et cetera, in, in managing those funds, you know, for, for long-term or, or perpetual uh, needs uh, that are, are uh, fit back to the mission of the organization. So that uh, kind of gives, a, a, again, it's a high level, I could really dive down probably into each of these and 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 and, and get more uh, definitive and descriptive. Um, but you know, if there are questions, feel free to ask or or cue them up to Ashley or or um, you know wherever those may be. But uh, that that kind of covers you know in jest of uh, you know I guess in in summary I might may kind of uh, say you know that it. It's all, it's, it's customizable based on the organization and what its mission is. So the mission, the, the organization has to be able to communicate what that mission is and what the ultimate goals are. And then that sounds as, as, a, as a framework or a foundation for the investment policy then to be built on. And uh, um, yeah, again, it's just all about ensuring the success for the organization. There's a question in the chat for you. Okay. Um, how often should you update the investment policy? Great question. Um, you know, as a committee or a board, at least on an annual basis, it ought to be looked at. It, it ought, you know, as part of that role or responsibility for the board or committee, they should be looking at it annually. And again, it's not to say that there's going to be changes. I would say on average, uh, you would see an organization maybe within a three-year window. That's where they may look at some, some active change or modification to that. Um, but the document itself, I mean, it's, it's, it's a perpetual document um, because certain parts are not gonna change. Um, 
I mean, there, there may be a, some kind of a radical shift or a change in the mission or, or, or what it is, or even the time horizon. So that could very quickly alter you know, the, the funds involved. Thank you, Mike. That looks yeah, like okay. example template. Uh, certainly, you know, we we um, we and others, you know, I mean, the other managers that, that manage funds for the foundation uh, would have, you know, documents like that. That, that and and you know, there again, those are there's no standard one size fits all. You know, the, it it is customizable based to the, the where where I would say the most point it would be time horizon and, and limits. You know, of of what may be involved. You know, there may be a certain pocket of money that's very delineated and tied to a particular uh, project or an event or, or something of that manner. So those would carry different types of uh, solutions than what it would be for something that's you know, long-term scholarship based or, or payouts or grants or whatever that may be. Um, yeah, so no, good, good questions. Oh, Scott has a question for you. Hey, Mike, uh, loved your comments. And I think one of the things that, that for me is a big takeaway is the active communication part on the IPS and and, and trying to get board members engaged and, um, and to, to really help the investment manager do what the organization wants to see done. Um, I'm curious to know, are you getting inquiries from, from your institutional clients about the markets now? With maybe a, a higher level of anxiety with the with the levels of the of the markets, you know, I, I would say, I mean, questions pop up and appear. Um, you know, one of the key components, and you'll look at that. You know, while that's kind of you know structured here, is developing an asset allocation and, and portfolio construction. And when we do that, you know, we're looking at you know a longer time horizon. So in doing that. You have to identify the purpose of the funds. And so it's, it, it, as you know, Scott, I mean, you know, 90-ish percent of, of what your return capture is going to be is going to be kind of be keyed or based in on how you're allocated. Um, so by having an effective portfolio that's constructed to withstand the, the entire market, market cycle, the ups and downs and the in-betweens, um, I can say just firsthand as a, as a, an investment manager, you know, in, in, in line with that, I'm, I'm having more conversations. I've had more conversations with clients uh, since the first part of 2020. And it's not, it's not necessarily, again, to make radical changes, but it's ensuring to trust in the process, trust in what we've established and, and the agreed upon uh, uh, structure that we've put in place. Um, but yes, I mean, communication is, no matter in, in what facility, occupation, job, et cetera, you're doing, without being an effective communicator, um, you know, that's 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 going to bring detriment, you know, to all involved. So, uh, yeah, I, I hope, hope that kind of answers. I mean, you know, the markets. I mean, I could go in and do an economic spin here and, and and dive into that, but you know, it's the, things have kind of been presented, and we're kind of in that. Um, uh, that terminology, the Tina, there is no alternative. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of push into equity. If you look at probably anybody's investment portfolio, you know, if, if they've had targets assigned, they're probably on the upper end of their targets. Um, you know, the fixed income market where it is, you know, uh, that's presented challenges and what the forward capital market looks are on fixed income. Uh, yeah, so that 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 brings into point. I mean, that is a conversation we've had with clients over the last couple of years about, um, you know, their allocation, um, and then specifically, more more importantly, I would say about what allowable investments are, are 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 they willing to utilize based on their risk tolerance and their acceptance of that. Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have a question for Mike before we kick it to Scott? Okay. okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mike. And if you will stop sharing your screen, I will reshare mine. <coughs>
the seconds before we show it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, folks. Um, Ashley asked me to speak about some of the individual investment options that uh, folks have access to. And it, it was really interesting to me having a conversation about how many nonprofit entities there are in the Roanoke Valley, for example. And a lot of them are very small and they don't have retirement plans uh, from their uh, entity. And there may be a lot of missed opportunity for folks to, to be saving for their own retirement. Um, so it's, you know, to me, I hope we can at least bring a little light to that, to those opportunities and that process. And I would back up a little bit and say, Hey, I, you know, Mike's comments, I think were great and, and relevant. And it's, it's a, just a different side, um, of the investment spectrum to be talking about the institutional piece and the IPS is I've got an IP, a, an RFP due tomorrow and we dive into all of that. In, in, in the IPS statement. And, you know, to me, it hits home. And if you're board members or participants, it's that communication piece, I think that's all important. And, and for folks to keep their eye on the time horizon for, for the, the mission of whatever the organization is. And, you know, I, I, we get clients that, that contact us a lot. And it's, these are stressful times. They have been for the last three years, but yet the market has really moved uh, enormously. Market's up 26% year to date. And, and yet there's a lot of um, you know, anxiety that in people that you talk to about investments. And, and I think for us, whether it's institutional or personal, it, it's your time horizon. It's all important. And, and that asset allocation piece and, and, you know, for me, I want to give just a light overview about the IRA um, animal that we have access to if you don't have a plan at work. And th they're really a great uh, tool to use to save. And, and if you don't have a plan through your, through your employer um, um, entity, then an IRA is going to be a logical way to start a savings plan for, for your own retirement. And I think you need to keep your eye on the ball there because, um, you know, sometimes entities will come up with a plan as they get more successful and bring in more assets and, and grow. Uh, but in the near term, an IRA could be a great opportunity to start saving for yourself. Um, I wanted to bring up something about Albert Einstein. And uh, it, it, I don't know if this is true, but the Google said it was. So we kind of have to go on that or Ben Franklin, but Albert Einstein was once asked, what was mankind's greatest invention? And the answer was compound interest. So, you know, and, and, and there's been claims that it's been called the eighth wonder of the world. And it's just, it, it's an amazing force. And um, if, you're, if you are an investment investor currently and you've seen how your accounts have grown, um, it's a really cool thing. And that's what we all want to have happen. As you save money, you want your money to be working as hard as you do. And we can get some tax efficiencies out of using an IRA, uh, which is an individual retirement account. Uh, these things were created. Um, you know, the, the, the social programs we have, Social Security, um, you know, Medicare, you know, the government knows we need to create some better opportunities for people to to save and, and, and have a successful retirement. We all wanna check out at some point and, um, and maybe have a little bit more control over what we do in our, our lives when we retire. And having uh, investment savings for that retirement is all important. And you know, right now we have a choice between a, a, a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA. And we get a lot of questions about that and, and what is, is more appropriate for a given investor. Um, and, and it depends. It depends on your tax status. Um, and to get back to, to, to the reasoning why these tools are effective, you, you can think about your parents. And, and it used to be that Social Security would actually float their retirement. And, and a lot of folks had pensions uh, back in the day. But you don't see that hardly at all anymore. Mostly that's in, in government government employees, um, you know, educators, law enforcement. For a lot of us, we don't have that pension opportunity. So 
estimates now are that Social Security is going to be about 40% of your retirement. So you need to put some hay in the barn if you're going to retire and, um, and, and maintain your standard of living. And so these IRA opportunities are a great tool to, to be able to do that. Um, I have a slide that uh, I'm glad Ashley didn't come in with a Starbucks cup because I would have felt <laughs> really self-conscious. But this is a slide and we'll, maybe we'll slip to the, uh, to the a Starbucks coffee or anything you can think of like that. But um, time in the markets is just uh, an amazing phenomenon and it's about compound interest and earnings. And you know how expensive things can be today and, and it, and I, when I go to Radford campus, sometimes I see the Starbucks and there's a line out the door. I mean, it's pretty spendy. And, and you think about it, and it's okay to do that once in a while. But if you think about the, the expense of whether it's lunch or, 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 or you know, a trip to Starbucks or something like that, we have a slide that's an example of what if you invested those dollars? You know, what, what kind of impact would that be? And as a culture, we've all gotten, I think, a lot more used to having things right now and an and immediate gratification. And what we hope we can instill in, in our clients and, and kids is, hey, pay yourself first, put some money away. Asset allocation is obviously important, but take advantage of the compound interest and earnings. We might have it. <laughs> We had it a moment in the far right, maybe in the bottom. Yeah. And so this is kind of a simple diagram before we uh, jump into the IRA um, slides that just gives you, I think, a, a good visual. If, if you were to skip the, the Starbucks $5 a day latte and, and, and put it in an investment account um, in five years, you know, you'd have $11,000. Um, if you kept investing $5 a day for 50 years, you'd have more than $800,000. It's, it's just amazing what um, compound interest and in earnings does. And it, it's important for all of us to have an awareness of that and just be, um, you know, aware of what your budget looks like and what we're spending money on. And I'm guilty, I do it. Uh, it it's easy to do. But uh, when you have a workplace plan, you know, it's so easy to have a payroll deducted a contribution to an investment account. When you pivot to something that you're doing yourself, like in an IRA, you got to have that discipline in place. And there's ways to do it. You can set up an automatic draft from your bank account. But, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's an opportunity that, that you want to get started as soon as you can. Most of us play catch up. I have never had a, a client say, I'm glad I saved enough for retirement. Everybody typically will say, I wish I started earlier. This slide, if you can see it, is, is an example of that is when you start. And, you know, and I have colleagues at, at the bank I work in, and, and it, it's, it impresses me so much to see some of these young people at, at 21, 22, jumping into the retirement plan at work and actually getting a head start on this. And this slide is an example of, of, of Jill and uh, Joey and Jack. And, and Jack started at age 25, Jill started at age 35, and Joey was the late bloomer, uh, started at 45. And so you see the different bar graphs and, and where the, the, the dollars accumulate. And Jack is the blue line starting at 25 years old. And it's just amazing what that time does for, for the amount of dollars that's in his uh, account. And, you know, to me, it's nice to see it in a graph format. Um, hopefully it creates a little, um, you know, push for folks to get started. And even if you're a Joey at, at a later stage in life, it's not too late to take advantage of the markets and, um, and actually make your money grow. And you know, one of Mike's comments, uh, fixed income rates are super low and, and they've been low and Fed policy is, is probably gonna be pretty uh, dovish here, even if they start to raise rates a little bit in 2022. So you know, the markets have offered that 
um, ability to get above and beyond um, normal inflation and actually add value to your account. Um, so let's talk about these IRAs a little bit and, and how you can get started and, and, and what makes sense um, for you. And it's gonna be different for every individual. You know, if you're married and you have a spouse and you file taxes together, um, you'll have a consideration about whether you do traditional uh, contributions that you can deduct through your tax return. Monies are gonna go through uh, after tax into either option, traditional or Roth, but the traditional can be deducted from your tax return when, when you file your taxes. And, and I think it's gonna be different for everybody depending on your, your income, your joint income, or if you file singly, what makes sense for you. The, the Roth has gained a lot of um, attraction because the principle here is that you, you put money in the account and then it grows. And then when you withdraw it in retirement, presumably you don't have a tax bill to pay. And it's the opposite for the traditional, that money goes in um, and, and grows, but when you withdraw it, you pay taxes at your current income tax rate. So a lot of folks are thinking that, you know, five years, 10 years, 20 years down the road, income taxes are gonna be higher. Um, you know, to me, I think it's nice to have a couple different buckets going, a pre-tax bucket, after-tax bucket, and even a taxable or retail investment account. They all look the same inside the box. The investments can be the same at the time horizons the same. It's just the tax treatment and, and how, you, uh, how you either pay uh, the IRS when you withdraw that money, or if you don't. Um, and as I said, the, the contributions initially are taxed if you're doing this individually. And you know, you, we think that perhaps tax rates are lower today then maybe they're going to be, you know, depending on your age um, down the road. And so the Roth is, is I think, a big, um, a big opportunity that people have to do individually or in their plan at work. Um, the, the contribution limits are actually kind of generous, uh, I think, for somebody who's just starting out. You know, 2021, the, the contribution limit is $6,000. So you're talking $500 a month and, um, you know, that's, that's a lot of money and, and it's a tall ask. When you get to your employer plan or, or a, you know, there's a SEPs or SIMPLES or the 401ks, they have much taller contribution limits. But I think even a $6,000 limit is, is a, a pretty amazing place to start. And if you can get there, uh, it, it will do an enormous benefit for your retirement that the slide we talked about with, with uh, Jack and Jill and Joey, that was $200 a month. You know, so you've got more opportunity to put more dollars in that. And, um, you know, so I think it's something you want to think about. It all starts with a budget. And, and when you look at what you've got coming in and what's going out, it, it's, it's, it's that budget that can help you determine, hey, how can I pay myself first? And then what am I going to do with it? And an IRA can make perfect sense. And so I think we're gonna have the, this, this, uh, this is essentially a brochure uh, from our brokerage platform that I think does a really good job of, of laying out the differences between a traditional and a Roth and the different tax deductibility uh, and contribution limits are in, in the, the, the fourth and fifth pages. And you know, so it's, if you don't have that plan or if your spouse has a plan at work, you still got the opportunity to, to take advantage of these opportunities. And, um, and I would definitely encourage you to do so. And um, I think that's, you know, I, I think what we're also going to do as a follow-up uh, with Ashley is attach investing basics. And we have a PowerPoint that's a lot longer and, and, and might be a little bit dry for a Zoom meeting, but it's a great reference piece for folks to get a baseline understanding about um, taking advantage of, of investing in the markets, determining an asset allocation and the investment pieces that could use perhaps in that IRA. And, and it allows you to have a better conversation with whether you go to an advisor to have a conversation about how to get started, or if you do it yourself and you feel empowered and, and you have enough um, confidence 
to go online and do it. There's a ton of opportunities online. Um, it's, uh, you know, every big platform from Vanguard to Schwab to Fidelity, uh, there is a ton of opportunities out there. Um, for, for us at, at, at our shop, I think we still have a ton of opportunity with folks who don't quite have that confidence. And, and we're, we're always ready and willing to help. And I'm sure at, at, at Mike's Bank is the same situation. And, and wherever you're located, you can find people that are absolutely ready, willing, and able to help you get started on a plan. Um, that piece, that the, the investing basics piece, I think will attach as a, an, an addendum after, the, uh, after we record this Zoom meeting. And I think it'll be very helpful. Is there any, yeah, is there any questions about um, IRA options or opportunities? I know we kind of went through the, the you know, the pages kind of quickly, but um, they're fantastic vehicles to use. And, and, you know, as typically, if you've had different jobs, you may have a 401k left out from a prior employer. It, it's very common that you would pour that money into an IRA you have established. A lot of folks have you know, numerous different jobs in their careers today. And, and having that IRA um, parking lot is a great place to, to, to transfer that money. And it makes it easier to, to keep an eye on your investments and, and your, your asset allocation. Um, you know, when, when I go to work every day, I'll have, I'm drawing circles every day. It, it's a pie graph. And we talk about asset allocation. And, and you know, once you've opened an account, and then it's determining what is the best fit for you when you start those investments. Um, we did have one person ask if you could share your last name and your organization. They missed your introduction. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So my name is Scott. Uh, last name is Arnett. I work at First Bank and Trust. I'm the investment manager in the trust department. Um, so, you know, in, in, in our bank, we have uh, we have a brokerage platform. So I've got the... Uh, the licenses for that side of the, of, of the house, but I spend the majority of my side on the trust platform, which is our fiduciary uh, managed platform, which is fee-based. Um, but there's opportunities for people on both sides. And, and um, yeah, thanks for the, uh, for the ask there. And Mike made a good comment about if you, if your organization does have um, a retirement plan that has a match, to make sure you're taking advantage of that match. Yeah, it, it's you have to look at your employer plan first, and and um, it's always awesome, you know, when your employer has a match, and and it's typically a lower cost place to invest, you know, with your employer plan. Um, you know, to me, in the conversation I had with Ashley, it, it just it's, I didn't I didn't realize it, but there is a ton of nonprofit institutions out there, and and folks that are just starting up in that that field that don't have access to a plan. So we thought we'd just kind of highlight, hey, you've got an opportunity to do this. Just do it in an IRA. So I guess one of my questions would be, um, if you are starting out, is there a percentage that you shoot up for to recommend people to up invest in their income? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And, and, and we get that a lot. And, and most financial planners, you know, look to a goal to replace your income in retirement, 75, 80% of your pre-retirement income. Typically, if you have a 15% goal for your savings rate, you can get to that bogey. And, and, and that would include your employer contributions if you get the match. There's always room for more. Um, you know, it's, there's generous contribution limits. I think it's 19.5 in a, in a 401k for, for employee contributions. You know the IRA is is six thousand. If you're uh, if you're over fifty, like some of us, there's an over fifty catch up provision. So it allows some of us who need to catch up to put more monies in these accounts. Um, but you know, you always want to be thinking about saving more, especially if you you want to retire. And and you know, not everybody is is retiring at sixty five. And I have a lot of conversations with folks that want to retire early, but you've got to plan for it and you've got to be able to be confident that you can get out of the workforce because you've got a, enough dollars saved in your retirement accounts. So 
Does anybody else have any questions for Scott or for Mike? It seems a little dry, but it's good stuff. When you look at your statement, you see things growing. And, um, you know, to me, I like to get in the weeds with some of the individual pieces of, of the, uh, the investment options that we provide. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you, and there's lots of easy opportunities to invest in, by the way, I would just say, um, there's target date funds. They make asset allocation super easy. And so don't be scared of it. If you've got questions, please reach out. Uh, I hope the piece that we add um, is sort of like the investment basics will add some some baseline understanding. But uh, we're here as a resource and, and 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 Ashley has contact information. Glad to answer any questions even after the, the current meeting. Um, we post all of our uh, nonprofit listening sessions on our website and we will be including um, all of the attachments as well. So if you go on our website, you can find all of this recording will be posted either today or tomorrow at some point. Um, and then you can see all previous recordings there as well. And I'll, I'll, uh, just one quick comment. We can't be on a community foundation call and not uh, put a plug there, but um, active conversations I'm having with some of the individual clients and gifting, uh, still taking full advantage of those charitable gift uh, allowances from IRAs uh, because you know you have to look at everybody's plan and what their legacy wishes etc are but you know that that's still allowable under current IRS code that you know up to that hundred thousand um, dollar of charitable uh, donations can come from an IRA so it's not going to be calced in as uh, their income so uh, that that's one thing to keep in mind, another thing to what Scott pointed out, where the markets have elevated, where at market highs, there's a lot of uh, unrealized gains uh, people have in positions. Um, if they're charitably inclined or if they have, you know, if, if they've seen a particular position just run and, and be a bigger portion of their, their portfolio, that's a target for a, a, an ideal gift uh, to an organization because yeah, they're, they're not going to face whatever that capital gain may be. And if it, if it aligns with what their principles are and, and, and going to the better good, then, uh, uh, you know, always, always bring that up. I mean, you may not be an expert on it, but if you talk to somebody and you hear them talking about, you know, and you know where their interests are, uh, I would say point them, point them to Ashley's direction, uh, you know, just when she gets back in, uh, Laura, uh, because yeah, they do wonderful things with what, what they what they bring in and capture. So that's a great point, Mike. Um, we just had uh, a client be made aware of that here just in the last week and, and, and his CPA is like, hey, this is you need to be thinking about this. And that's a pretty generous uh, opportunity for somebody that's charitably inclined. Absolutely. Great point. And John Muffo is um, a board member and also our investment committee chair. So I'd be remiss if I didn't ask John if he had any comments to make. Um, uh, not at this time. The only thing I had was thinking about a little bit was rebalancing. Um, you know, with the, with the markets the way they are now, um, it seems that uh, um, a lot of times the uh, 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 the portfolios um, are not. Uh, as precise as, as uh, some people might think in terms of the uh, proportions of stocks, bonds, and so on. And uh, right now, I think uh, some portfolios are, are a little bit out of, uh, out of range as, as Mike uh, um, uh, implied. And uh, now, right now, uh, some portfolios are being rebalanced a bit. Um, the only challenge I can see is we don't know how to rebalance them because the, the bond market is so so weak in terms of, per, of percentages of, uh, of of return that uh, we don't know where to put put the money. Um, so I, that's the only uh, thought I had right now. I'm not sure where 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 we re rebalance because it, it's not very attractive to put put money into bonds right now. So I don't know if you had any comments on that either of you. Mike, you want to take that first? Yeah, certainly. Um... You know, that, that's part of a discipline, you know, that's done. And, um, 
you know, accounts, we, we look at segments and pockets, but you also have to look on the horizon and see what's there. And, and a little bit to your point is where do you diversify? Where, where do you, um, you know, where do you redeploy those funds? Tip and, 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 you know, ideal terminology or thoughts, you know, you take from, you know, that overvalued and, and push back into something that is, has under, underperformed and, in, in, in connection, but you know that 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 may not necessarily be always the best route or opportunity. Um, you know, case in point, I mean, when when a, a recent rebalance was done here, it was to take advantage of what we see for the next, you know, six to 12, 18 months, and and just part of the pronouncement or shift in in in, in part of what is more attractive in the market. Um, so you you still have those long range tac, uh, strategic targets that are in play you have ranges within each of those classes yes you know, so you're able to move uh, but that that's where it speaks down to that investment manager and their discipline of of how they operate and and how much leadway you know that, that they're willing to you know move above target you know given it what they see on the horizon so um uh, it, it 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 it's it's a little bit more of art, uh, John. You know, I mean, um, you know, essentially being an architect uh, per se of, of how to do that. But you know, we we have taken some gains from the table, and and that's the beauty of being a nonprofit. Um, you know, we can capture gain off, and and you know, we're not worried about that tax bill that's going to be settled. Um, yeah, so that that's that's the beauty of being able to do those periodic rebalances. And, and the only thing I would add um, to Mr. Muffo's comment is 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 about risk, you know, and and um, even when we're investing in those fixed income sides of the of the market, um, you know, things are still going to be laddered, and and you're still you know always marching towards that maturity, and so even though the the, the returns are getting a little skinny, um, I, th I still think it's relevant because you're getting the opportunities on the the equity side, and um, yeah, it, it's amazing when your bond traders are excited about a 1% yield. Um, it, it, it's like, really? Are we excited about that? It, it's, uh, and it's a little frustrating. And you can imagine, you know, how savers feel in the CD markets and, and, and the like where rates are well below 1%. Uh, but there's still opportunities out there, I think. But I think it's the risk piece that, that drives um, the asset allocation. And I don't think you want to overreach um, more into equities than maybe the, the border group would be um, comfortable with. And, and all that, I think, is driven by that IPS. Exactly. It'll change. It just might take five years, you know? Well, yeah. I mean, there, there's all kinds of levels of risk. Equity, systematic market risk. I mean, but there's inflation. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of other factors that fit, fit in. So, you know, typically fixed income, as you look at it, I mean, it, it acts as that ballast or that portfolio reducer, you know, I mean, essentially to have that plug, the flight to safety, you know, when when things do occur. Um, but there are some other, you know, uh, uh, assets similar to fixed income that are non-correlated. They don't carry that same type of, of, of drive of what the equity risk in the market does. Um, so it's it, again, it's remindful of, of Scott's comment. You know, the, the investment policy that's in place, the targets that are there, and the purpose, the timeline, the horizon of of, of what's involved. So uh, it's a multi-factor uh, uh, um, answer, you know, I guess to that question, John. Thanks, Mike, and thanks, Scott. Does anybody have anything else for them before we close the call? Well, just real quick before we get off, um, our next, um, our last listening session of the year, December, is going to be um, pretty casual. So December 16th, I believe, is the date off the top of my head. Um, it'll be on our calendar, and we'll be sending out an email as well. Um, it's going to be at 9 a.m. on Zoom, and um, we're going to be celebrating some of our uh, grant recipients on that call. Um, so join us to celebrate the, the wonderful year that we had, even though we were still in the pandemic. 
Um, we're also going to be sending out a survey in the next week or so to all nonprofits. We really value your all feedback when we're planning these listening sessions. So it's been really helpful to hear what you guys are interested in and how we can help facilitate some training sessions such as investments or self-care. So all the great ones that we've had this year have really been based off of feedback that you all have given us. So um, be on the lookout for that survey that's going to be coming out and please take it so that we can make sure that we're offering you all the best that we can. Um, once again, this call will be recorded and um, all the materials that Mike sends me and that Scott gets to me, we will be posting on our website under the listening sessions tab, but we appreciate you guys starting your day with us and hope that you have a wonderful Thursday. So thanks for coming. Have a good day. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Scott. Welcome.